Dennis, tell us a little bit about your business, if I understand it correctly, because we don't know each other. We have not met each other. I actually tracked you down from a Facebook uh, and LinkedIn and just became intrigued of all of the different things that you're doing for small business owners. So, so kind of fill us in what your primary uh, business is. Yeah, but my primary business is called Franchise Scale. And, and basically what I do is I get pitched by small businesses across the U.S., all over the place, um, who want to scale their business via using franchising versus doing it a company-owned route. So uh, I guess if my expertise is really vetting concepts and businesses and ensuring that they have the capability to be able to grow through a franchising model. Of course, franchising is responsible for about two-thirds of of uh, uh, the U.S. economy on a retail side, it's, it's just massive. And it's, it's a great way to grow. It's OPM, other people's money, and other people's effort. And so um, some of my brands over the last 10 years have been Home Care Assistance, which is a senior care space, Junk King, which is junk removal and recycling, The Flying Locksmiths out of Boston, which is a commercial locksmith industry, WaveMax, which is a laundry industry, and Nerds to Go, which is like it's an IT company. So they're all... Non sexy businesses, but high margin, great growth vehicles. Look, look, uh, I'm sorry, go right ahead, Bill. Dennis, I'm going to ask you outside of capital, which is, I'm sure, going to be number one. Outside of capital, what do you think is the number one impediment to people getting involved in their own business? Um, I, I think that there has to be a, a, a realistic approach to understanding what, what owning a small business is. Primarily, the, the, the people that come to me that want to own a, a franchise or own a small business are coming out of corporate America, and, and generally they have a really well-defined skill set. Maybe they're in marketing, maybe they're in operations, maybe they're, you know, what, whatever that skill set, very, very well-defined. But, but, but owning a small business, as you guys know, is a little bit more eclectic than that, right? There's a lot of skills, so it's really incredibly important that they become adaptive. And, and that's great if they're great at marketing, but if they're not great at logistics and operations, they need to understand that that's where their weakness is and deal with their weakness. It's easy to deal with our strengths in life, a lot more difficult to deal with our weaknesses. So, uh, Dennis, uh, I want to make sure I'm, I'm clear on this. So you can take a single or uh, low multi-unit operation, let's say they've got four or five operations, and help them scale it to a point that they can, uh, that can become a national franchise. Am I, am I clearly getting that correctly? That's correct. <laughs> so, if, if, for example, home care assistance in Palo Alto was a single-unit operating in, uh, in California in 2006, and now we have about 120 units and do about $130 million a year in revenue. So, so that's a... Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, no, no, I, I, I wanted to kind of get an understanding. I've got a lot of clients of mine that, you know, before they even open up their first operation, they're thinking, man, I'm going to make this a national franchise. Can you kind of walk through some of the pieces that you really believe they need before they should contact you and get started down the road of, of franchising? Is there sort of like this foundation they should have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if I look at the last five brands that I've that I've grown, the average, um, you know, operating time has been somewhere between five and ten years. Meaning that the unit that I'm basing the franchise model on has been in operations for five to ten years. So I have a lot of historical perspective there to be able to go in and 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 look at it. I do a forensic accounting to ensure that their financials are are what they say they are. Because I mean. You know, it, it, people fall in love with their businesses, but if they're not making money and I can't scale it and, and have a reasonable expectation that my, my new franchise partner is going to be successful, then, you know, we're, we're waste, everybody's wasting each other's time. So when I go into that concept, I'm looking at operations. I'm looking at, um, you know, HR, what's the, what's the human resource requirements? What's the amount of capital? Is it too capital intensive? What's, you know, red to black? How do we get to break even quickly? What's the return on investment? And can I mentor these people? Because they might be really, really good at running that submarine sandwich shop, and it might have great legs to grow. But if I can't mentor them into becoming a franchisor who's responsible for hundreds or thousands of people's lives, it's just not going to work. Well, and that happens, that happens a lot for me. I turn people down because of it. Right. Dennis, if you could give one piece of advice from a business owner from California to Carolina, one piece of advice, what would that be? For a small business owner? Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'd say um, 
you know, a lot of people think, in the, and you know, this is just my two cents doing this for 25 years, but a lot of people think that they want to own, the business that they own, has to, they have to have passion behind it. Meaning passion is <laughs> like, I, 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 you know, I love yoga, or I love, you know, sports, or I love um, fishing, or I love baseball, or whatever it is, and they, and they think that the, the business has to be about that. And I, I say contraire. I say really, you know, you have to go more analytical about a business that you're going to start, whether it's a franchise, an existing business that you're going to acquire, or you're going to be a startup yourself and, tr- and try to do it. The passion is great. Tenacity, I like to see tenacity, but not necessarily the passion for what they're doing. I want them to be analytical about the business. Will it meet my family goals? Do I have enough capital to be able to support this um, and grow it, to, you know, if, if it's a startup? So just really laser focused on, on and, and, you know, surround yourself with, with people that own small businesses. I, I always tell people, listen, I got a big mouth, but I got big ears, too. I listen. And that's how I learn. And that's how, you know, you can become adaptive to the marketplace and, and, and really, you know, grow your skill set. So it, it's really you know, be, tena- be tenacious, but but don't worry about the passion part. Really, De- really Dennis, define what kind of business you want. D- Dennis, um, I, I have owned a couple of area development, uh, you know, uh, area rep, call it what you want, uh, you know, for some, some franchises over the years. And you make this sound really easy, and and I'm an example of how hard it is to take a concept from one part of the country and move it to another. Can you talk about how you do that? Because that's not easy to do. The fact that you've been able to create these national brands, it, it is a real skill that requires somebody to really understand not only the industry, but how the demographics change in different areas. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a great question, because I just went through this with my newest concept. I just launched out of Guilford, Connecticut. Guilford's, uh, you know, is, is not a big city. It's about 30 minutes from New Haven, about an hour from Hartford. So it's called Nerds to Go. So it, it's pretty easy to understand. It's like Geek Squad, except. So, so when I went in and I betted that business, I generally will take a couple of months betting the business. I had to make sure it wasn't an anomaly, because the cash flow and his revenue, and he had two Best Buys, i.e. Geek Squads, in his backyard, who's operating in a small marketplace. I really needed, and it's exactly what you said, the demographic profile. So what I have to be able to do is, is say, I can pick this up and I can put it down in Allen, Texas, or Foxborough, Massachusetts, or San Jose, California, or wherever it is, and ensure that that franchisee has a great opportunity. So that comes down to the math, which is demographic profile. So it's household income, it's um, number of, you know, for this brand, it's the number of devices in the house. So absolutely, you're, you're correct. You have to try to match that demographic profile as close as possible. Then it's the location side, really understanding and drilling down. And, and I have to get into the weeds. I have to get really, really deep into the concept because I'll fall in love with the concept myself. When, you know, if I, and and I got, I, I'll drink my own Kool-Aid too quickly. So I need to back up and make sure that I'm doing all the due diligence before I take it to market. Right. Dennis, I'm going to ask you a question, just a personal question. Outside of your family members, what one – person shaped your most influenced your business career um yeah <laughs> this will be an interesting one um a business partner that uh frauded me <laughs> oh okay and, uh, well that's it let's it's a lesson to learn <laughs> it was a hard lesson learned uh, yeah living out of my car for a week after that happened so that was a lot of fun it was right at the dot-com days yeah no he uh it's, uh, yeah, shame on me, and I'll, that'll never happen again. But yeah, he defrauded the entire company and myself personally. And Dennis, that was a big, big learning curve. Dennis, thank you so much. We've only got about thirty seconds, my friend. What advice do you want to give the person thinking about buying a franchise right now? What's what's some of the uh, quick advice you'd give them? Yeah, um, again, don't lead with passion. Lead with analytics. Lead with you know. Surround yourself, get other people's opinions, make your own decision on which concept it is. There's about 3,000 active concepts out there. So, you know, there's a lot of white noise, and you have to really drill it down. Um, and, and get a lot of coaching. I mean, you know, rely on other people's opinions. Make your decision yourself, your final decision. But, I mean, that's how we learn in life, right? By yeah. other people's experiences, and then we, 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 we get that experience, too, through them. So. Thanks, Dennis. I wish we had more time. We're going to get you back on when we've got some other things to talk about.